Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today I have the Blackview S6 4G Android smartphone to take a look at. Uh, this week is just going to be an unboxing video to show you what's in the box. Uh, next week I'll be back with a full hands-on review of the Blackview S6. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Anyway, let's dive right in and have a look at the Blackview S6. So as you can see from the box, it's all white. Uh, it does have this embossed sort of logo on the front and what looks sort of almost like a brick wall of some kind. It's coming in at an angle. Um, I don't know. It's white. It's doesn't really jump out at you or anything like that. But on the back, it's got a whole bunch of warranty information, a bunch of different languages. But if you look down here, it's got S6. So uh, this particular device is running Android 7.0. You're looking at a 5.7 inch 720p display. You're looking at a 4,180 milliamp hour battery, so that's pretty large. And you're looking at the MT6737 processor at 1.3 gigahertz, which is fairly common for budget devices. And you have a dual camera setup, so you got a 2 megapixel and 8 megapixel shooter on the back and you have a two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. So again, for something that is uh, an entry level device, um, I, this one I picked up on gearbest.com for about $100 US. Um, the specs are what you would expect. But anyway, let's have a look. Set that off to the side. So we have the phone here. We'll set that off to the side for a second and we'll take a look at that in a second. I just wanna see what's in the box here. Check that. Okay, so it looks like they give you a little plasticky screen protector. Um, I don't particularly like these, so I probably won't apply this one, but uh, it's nice that it comes with it. This is the instruction manual. Uh, looks like, you know, it has stuff in English as well as other languages, but again, if you have experience with phones, you know how to set them up, so it's probably pretty useless. You have a oh, USB 3 uh, cable, and that's a micro USB for charging and data transfer, so that's nice to see. The, the cable feels like it's pretty good quality, by the way. Um, it's nice and thick. It's got the Blackview logo on it. And it looks like you have a charging brick here, and that looks to be just your pretty much your standard slow charger. And... Blackview actually has supplied some earbuds, and it's a 3.5 mil, uh, so that leads me to believe that this particular phone does have a standard 3.5 mil headphone jack. And what is this? This is a voice control. Yeah, it looks like it must be a microphone uh, voice control sort of little dongle on the headphone. So that's nice to see. It's I mean, you don't really see too many accessories and stuff uh, with phones anymore, so it's always good to see that these uh, Chinese companies are including a lot of that stuff. And that's going to do it. There's nothing else in the box. All right, let's take a look at the phone. First things first, it has a case on it. So let's get this case off if I can. Um, so again, always good to see that these Chinese manufacturers are willing to chuck in these little extras. Again, for 100 bucks, I wouldn't expect them to. But at the same time, uh, you know, it, it is kind of hard to find accessories like this. I mean, as cheap as they are, uh, it's hard to find them for these smaller companies. So always welcome now the phone itself first thing first impression it's heavy uh, so it's got to be at least a couple hundred grams um, it does feel fairly nice uh, let's get this little screen protector thing off okay so again it's a 5.7 inch so this is an 18.9 aspect ratio on this particular device um, some people like that, some people don't. The only thing that I have an issue with, because it does feel comfortable in the hand, the only problem is when you're watching videos, especially YouTube videos, you get these black bars on the side, which um, I'm not really into. But anyway, let's let's take a, a closer look at the actual phone. So up at the top here, you have a 3.5 mil uh, audio jack. Again, always nice to see. You have your charging port here. That's a micro USB. I prefer them to be down at the bottom, uh, but that's just a personal preference. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, turning the phone to the side here, you got your volume and your power button. And if we flick it down to the back, it looks like you got speaker grills here. Uh, when I do my hands-on review, um, I suspect that only one of these actually works, but you know, I guess aesthetics, I wanna make it look good. Um, and then there's nothing over on this side either. So 
since there's nothing on that side, it leads me to believe that the back must be removable. And it looks like there is a little notch here. So let's, oh gosh, let's see if I can take this off ah, without damaging it. So yeah, so this is the, the back. Well, first of all, it has that uh, design to it. Um, I don't know if you can see that really well, but uh, I guess it makes it look sort of premium. I don't know. I don't particularly like it. I would have preferred if it was just, you know, matte black or something. But uh, I don't know. It's got a bit of a texture to it, and I guess it looks cool. To each his own, I suppose. But for me, I'm not super into it. But anyway, this is just plastic, this back cover here. So... On the back here, wow, look at that battery, it's just super shiny. So uh, 4,180 milliamp hours, that's pretty big. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. And it looks like here you get your SIM and so your dual SIM, both of them are 4G by the way, and then you have your micro SD card slot along with your fingerprint reader and your dual camera. But uh, it's always I mean, it's unusual to see a phone with a removable back, removable battery, especially these days. But uh, anyway, that's how you get your micro SD and your SIM cards in there. So it is a dual SIM. Both of those SIMs do function on 4G. So that's always good. Anyway, getting back to the actual build quality of the phone, uh, like I said, it's heavy, but it feels really solid. It feels really nice in the hand. And part of the reason why it feels nice in the hand and why it's so heavy is that the frame is metal. Um, so this is all around here is metal, which is impressive for the price point. And it looks really good. I know it's hard to see because, you know, I've got the black model. There's a blue model as well, but I didn't like the color. So, but even the buttons here are metal, which is really nice. So it does give it a sort of premium feel. The problem is, is that where the back cover meets the frame, you get this sharp sort of edge. And that, to me, always feels a bit cheap. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I, I like the, the uniformity of having that smooth sort of edges. Um, but this one just has that kind of lip, if you will. Anyway, uh, again, first impressions, taking it out of the box for 100 bucks, pretty surprised. It is heavy. Some people aren't going to like that. But, you know, for those of you who like a bit of heft to your phone because, you know, it feels solidly built you're gonna like that there is this metal frame all around the phone which i'm very impressed with for a hundred bucks i thought when i initially picked this up that it was going to be all plastic but this guy is metal um aside from the back and obviously the glass front but it's a 5.7 inch screen again 18.9 aspect ratio and comes with uh you know dual camera fingerprint scanner and um you know pretty standard but anyway uh, again, the, the metal frame is really impressive. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because next week I'm going to be doing my hands-on review of the Blackview S6. So make sure you tune back in to get my full rundown on how this guy performs on a day-to-day -day basis. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. It's been the Blackview S6. Thanks for watching. And again, I will catch you next week. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.